Italy is all set to have its snap elections on September 22nd. The election comes in the context of the dissolution of the Italian parliament in July, eight months ahead of its term ending. Voting will be held to 400 seats in the Chamber of Deputies as well as 200 elective seats in the Senate of the Republic. All major political parties and their coalitions are competing in these elections. This includes the right-wing league, Social Democratic, Democratic Party and the populist five-star movement. Leftist parties have also launched an electoral platform called the People's Union and have begun campaigning across the country. The People's Union was launched on July 9th comprising Potere al Popolo, Democracy and Autonomy, Communist Foundation Party, Manifest A, Socialist Rebirth and Party of the South. They have put forward a 12-point program in their manifesto titled The Italy We Need. Unione Popolare, Popular Union has a 12-point program uh, and uh, this 12-points program is organized around four main uh, axes. The first axis is peace. So we are against war, of course. We are one of the only uh, alliance in these elections who is positioning ourselves against war directly and concretely. The second point is labor and wealth redistribution. Uh, the third point, the third axis is uh, green transition, a really green transition in the context of like a redistribution of uh, money uh, in Europe of the next generation EU money. And the fourth and last one, it's like strengthen the public sector against the private interests, above all in transport, health and school. So, uh, I mean, it's clear that in this context, in this conjuncture, like in Italy with the Draghi government, every that was a, a government of national unity, every single party sustained and supported the intervention of Italy in uh, the war in Ukraine. And that has huge consequences for the working class and for the people. We are an organization, we are an alliance that is saying we are against the militarization of the Ukrainian war and of our societies in general. Uh, we have to stop sending the weapons to Ukraine. We have to stop using the military bases in Italy of the US and the NATO to get involved into the war. And we have to stop increasing the military expenditure uh, to 2% of the GDP, how um, uh, NATO and the US is asking. Uh, the money is needed for solving uh, everyday problems of the working class and of the people, as for example, energy bills increasing uh, in Italy by 100, 200, or even 300% in the last months. So the money is needed uh, uh, and we know where to find the money. We have to taxing the extra profits of the private energy companies. You have to stop to spend the money for uh, for war in Europe and all over the world. Then the second main point and the main campaign, Potere al Popolo and Unione Popolare is uh, running since months. It's we are fighting for a legal minimum wage uh, from of at least 10 euro per hour. Uh, officially, 5.5 million workers uh, are earning less than 10 euro per hour and uh, they are considered working poor. That means that they are uh, have they have really problems to get uh, at the end of the month by paying pill, bills and so on and so on. And on this 5.5 million uh, workers being working poor, uh, from the statistics, statistics are excluded also people not uh, working regularly and uh, being integrated in irregular work. So the official number of people, of working poor people, uh, it's even higher. So this is a measure, a very concrete measure that is solving social problems in Italy. And every single party in the, in the parliament today is, not, is fighting against a legal minimum wage. They give the responsibility to, to the companies and are saying the companies should decide by themselves how much they should pay. They should have social responsibilities. And we know that in the situation of crisis, social responsibility is not like a social thing, but it's a private thing. Private interests are always put uh, uh, before the general interest. So we say the state has to intervene. The state has to define a legal minimum wage. We have already uh, also uh, um, a law proposition prepared. We will deposit it in the parliament on uh, September 26th, the day after the elections, because we know that if we do it now, it will be just forgotten, uh, be forgotten in the parliament. And so the next government will not take it in consideration. We will deposit it on, the, on September 26th to show that we will be there also after uh, the elections. And, uh, and the last thing, I think the green transition 
it's uh, it's very important. It's very important because of two reasons. First of all, in green transition, a lot of public money uh, is uh, connected. We have, like as I said, the next generation EU money coming from the European Union, uh, which will reach Italy and which uh, will also be invested in uh, in in the green transition. But the main uh, perspective of the ruling parties is to give it to the private companies so that they can like having this green uh, transition. And we know what it means if it is given to the privates, it's uh, greenwashing. So they will use the public money just to greenwash themselves. We say, no, we have to strengthen the public sector above all in the transport uh, um, uh, sector because uh, the Germany showed it uh, last month. They, they had like a, a very cheap free ticket for everyone, the nine euro per month to, uh, to, to have public transport, access to public transport. And a lot of people took public transport, they let the, uh, the, the cars uh, at home and also the emissions uh, went down. So there is a very concrete, uh, a concrete way to fight against uh, the, the, the ecological crisis uh, all over the world. And we say that we need to invest in, pub in the public to solve this problem. Italy has been gripped by a political crisis since the 2018 general elections. All three coalition governments that have ruled the country since then fell due to internal conflicts and defections. After the 2018 general elections, the Five Star Movement League coalition formed the government with Giuseppe Conte as Prime Minister and Matteo Salvini and Luigi Di Maio as Vice Premiers. In August 2019, Salvini withdrew support to the government, leading to Conte's resignation. Following this, the Five Star Movement formed a new coalition government under the leadership of Conte with the support of the Democratic Party. This government also fell in early 2021 when former Prime Minister Matteo Renzi, the leader of the Centrist Italia Viva Party, withdrew support. Later in February 2021, Mario Draghi assumed the prime ministership of the government of national unity, consisting of parties ranging from social democrats to the far right. However, Mario Draghi too had to resign after the Five Star Movement withdrew their support to the government. The Five Star Movement opposed parts of the economic stimulus package put forward by the Mario Draghi-led government. The Five Star Movement had raised concerns over some proposals which were part of a financial package worth 23 billion euros. The package was earmarked to fight the cost of living crisis marked by high fuel prices and soaring inflation. People across the country exhausted by the prolonged COVID-19 crisis are now also facing an unbearable cost of living crisis. Progressive sections of Italy, especially the left and trade unions, have been waging militant struggles against this. The crisis has been deemed to be a result of the years of austerity measures in the name of neoliberal economic policies. The elections will decide if there will be a continuation of the neoliberal policies of the previous governments.